Hello and welcome to Geeky Bit. Today in tech history, I would like to talk to you about soft modems. Soft modems were first introduced back in 1996 and the technology dates back to 1993. Digicom was said to have come up with the name soft modem. Soft modems, of course, are known by another name, win modems. It is believed the Win Modem moniker came from US Robotics Sportster modem because it was a purely software modem for Windows. Soft modems, of course, were cheaper to manufacture than hardware modems, thus making them prolific by the late 90s and early 2000s. As you can see in this picture, you can still purchase soft modems today. In fact, this variant is a USB-based soft modem. Soft modems came in two specific variants. One is known as the DSP, which is a semi-hardware modem with software program at startup. The second variant is of course a purely software one, where it only provided a digital to analog interconnect and made the computer CPU do all the heavy lifting for the modem functionality. One thing to note is these modems mostly lacked open driver or Linux support. Here is a classic example of an old PCIe soft modem. With all of that out of the way, let's get into my story about soft modems. At the end of the 90s and into the early 2000s, I worked at an internet service provider called Chinook Salmon Net, and their slogan of course was, up the internet stream. Kind of silly, but I guess it went with the salmon theme. I started working there because the computer shop job I had just didn't give me the hours I needed now that I was out of high school. When I first started working at that ISP, I was very part-time. And at the time, people were still mostly using hardware modems or modem cards for their computers. Then the seventh month in of working there, that all changed. You see, when most people called in, they just needed us to fix their ATDT commands to make sure their connection was good and stable. Then suddenly, those known working ATDT adjustments stopped working. And we didn't know why until we found a common factor. That turned out to be, of course, wind modems slash software modems. They just didn't work well, and there was all kinds of speculation as to why. From them not being able to handle the noise tolerances in phone lines, to other programs hogging CPU usage. After all of us phone technicians realized it was soft modems, we talked to our parent company to see if they would let us tell the customers that. Of course, they told us not to tell the customers that it could be their issue, or the issue of their modem to be more specific. After that, things got much worse. Customers grew upset and impatient with us. Some stopped their service altogether. Others just yelled at us for not being able to fix their issue. And we of course weren't able to explain to them what the issue actually was. So before I continue, I need to give a little bit of context. The company had one administrator for all of the hardware, three full-time technical support people, and myself who was part-time. Okay, now back to the story. Something snapped. Finally, those three other technical support people could no longer take the verbal abuse from customers and their frustrations in not being able to tell them that it was the soft modems that those customers had. Being fed up with an untenable situation, all three of them quit on the same day. This was both great and bad news for me. I was promoted on the spot to lead technician, but the bad news was I was the only technician for the time being. Of course, this or the wind modems didn't stop me from doing the best I could to always make sure the customer was happy, even if I wasn't able to fully resolve their issue. I pleaded with the higher ups to let me have a physical phone line and a computer system with a soft modem so I could try to see if there was a way to resolve this issue that didn't involve me having to necessarily tell the customer that the modem issue was on their end. And sure enough, there was something interesting I found. It took about half a day, but it was well worth the work I put in. And that was that the system had better odds of connecting if I did a few things. First, if I only had the dialing program up instead of any other applications on the system. Secondly, if I made sure there was 
was a line filter on the phone line itself. And lastly, if I made sure to try to connect multiple times. Of course, it was still touch and go, but this definitely improved the situation greatly. Armed with these new facts, I was able to make most customers okay. Not happy, but okay. I told the parent company we still need to be able to give a disclaimer that the soft modems had these usability issues. Luckily, by this time, I had some clout from the quality of the new hires that I've trained to catching the former administrator stealing new hardware and trying to pass old used hardware off as that new hardware he had stolen. Given all of that, and that the company wasn't a multinational juggernaut with layers of abstraction before you could find a decision maker, they decided to give in to my request and allow me to tell the customers about their situation. This resulted in the resolution of the hand tying of us customer support representatives and it made the customers a lot happier and made things smoother once they had a reasonable expectation of their hardware and being able to connect to our internet service. Here are my thoughts about soft modems. The idea of having a modem that could have a simple software update and use the latest standards was amazing, but the fact that it didn't work great was also a major issue. With a multitude of other networking options now being available, it is great that people do not have to be stuck with wind modems or soft modems. As my experience was bad, many others were also bad, but it looks like it won out in the end over hardware modems. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. And if you did, feel free to like the video. And if you aren't subscribed already, feel free to. And also if you want to get notifications of future videos, click that bell button.